What's going on, y'all? This your boy, Chris Simmons, coming to you with another special, special episode because it is the 100th podcast episode that I have released, man. Congr- hey, man, I'm just so proud of like just how far I've come, man. It's been a it's been a long journey, man. Like started back in 20. You know, you already know the story how, you know, when I told my Achilles and, uh, you know, decided, you know what, I need to, you know, put something out here to really help encourage me, uh, myself as well as others. So it was just crazy. Like I started in my basement for real. And now we on the hundred episode, man. It's been crazy. You know what I'm saying? And no better way to celebrate than to have my partner in crime with me, Miss Sandra Cruz. What's going on with you, girl? How you doing? Uh- Chris, I'm so excited. It's your 100th episode, and I'm here to celebrate it with you. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, shared a lot of golden, like I like to call them golden nuggets um, on this podcast. And I'm so excited and so proud that you invited me to come along. And and let me tell you something. It's a blessing that we could share this. Every every time we get on here, we could share some nuggets for people to to just link in and, and, and kind of just uh, take that and run with it, I guess and use it for for the better good. Um, But I wanted to ask you, Chris, is that what I think it is on your wall? What? What do you think it is? Is that your diploma? It is. (laughs) Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Did I? You know what? Congrats on that. A little bit late, but congrats on that. I like seeing that. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All that hard work paid off, huh? (laughs) <laughs> hey i guess you know i got like a little piece of paper you know what i'm saying all that work for that paper you know what I, mean? uh, I know i know i went through four years and then you get this little paper i mean i got the paper and the bill along with it but yeah right. yeah they like well <laughs> yeah, like you gotta pay make sure it was funny because like before we had got to receive the bill like forgot to receive the, the coma they was like all right before you uh before you get this, make sure that all your dues pay. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm like, y'all tripping. <laughs> but yeah, my mama had got me this little frame, and you know, she was like, Chris, we're like, you should hang up in your apartment. I was like, all right. So that's where I got that from. But if we're from, uh, you know, my the poem, I don't even know where it'd be. It'd probably be stored away somewhere. But mine is stored, so. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's in a nice little frame, but I stored it because I'm not, I don't know, I don't have anywhere to put it on these walls over here. My apartment's super small, but yeah. congratulations on that. That's a blessing. Yeah, appreciate it, though. Appreciate the the congratulations and everything, man. It's like, it, it, it's crazy, like, you know, real quick, you know, like just, you know, like the progression of like how this podcast has came along. Like I had like, you know, started with just me. You know what I'm saying? Then I had, the, you know, came up with the idea of having guests on the show. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know back in 21, my boy Shay, um, I was telling my boy Shay, I'm like, hey, man, I'm doing a podcast. He was like, all right. Like, yeah, like, that's cool. Let me, can I be on it? I was like, okay, cool. And then after we did the, sh- did the episode, he was like, yo, man, like, I could really help you, like, get your podcast out there. And so that's when, you know, we got back on social media, started doing the outreaches, had plenty of guests. Had a co had my first co-host at one point. Um, that was fun. And then like, you know, I just continue to keep having guests until I finally met Sandra. Sandra, I met Sandra in 22. And that's when I was telling her, I'm like, yeah, we I do a podcast. She's like, oh, okay, like bet, like, you know, would you be cool if I came on? I'm like, all right, bet. And so here we are, like, it's just crazy. Like, you know, all the people, different people that's came along, you know, really enjoyed the people that's been on here. So yeah, I'm still continuing to progress and still continue to move forward. So that's that's really like my quick little, just like my quick little, uh, you know, overview of what's been going on. And we're gonna continue to make a hundred more episodes, man. You know what I'm saying? I know people gonna be like, Chris, like, you know, they gonna be like, man, like, when you gonna stop? I'm be like, nah, like, I'm just gonna keep going for real. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't. I, I have a passion. Yeah. I'm gonna keep going. So. Yeah, like why stop? I mean, it's a good thing. What they say, what's that saying? Don't ruin a good thing. It's exactly. a good thing. <laughs> exactly. If you're passionate about something, you know, what's the point of like giving it up? You know what I mean? Like, why would yeah. you give up something you're passionate about? So, you know, I yeah. agree with that 100%. Mm-hmm. So agree with that. Like, I'm super passionate about the topics we speak about. Mm-hmm. Um, and and for real, though, it was it was a blessing in disguise that I was able to find 
uh, someone to share because before I met you, I always wanted to do a podcast and I even looked up like, okay, how to do it on my own, what to do, what would I talk about? And then this opportunity came along. So it's been very, um, it's been, it's been awesome. It's been a blessing. That's all I could say, a blessing to talk about these things because there are topics that I think need to hit home for some people and do. So yeah, here we are. Yeah. 100. <laughs> oh, 100. Keep it 100. Now, um, I know I'm still on the Zoom 40 minute plan, so we're going to get right into the show. And I know Sandra mentioned how it's been it's been a blessing. Uh, speaking of blessings, that's that's the topic I want to get into today is going to be, you know, talking about counting your blessings. Um, and I came up and I and I came up with this topic kind of like, you know, last night. Um because you know it was a lot there was a lot there was a lot that happened last night like uh i know on sunday sunday afternoon my dad had called me and he was like trying to check in and see how i was doing everything because you know my parents most of my folks still live up in ohio so uh my dad happened to have a meeting which is today um in dalton georgia which is about an hour hour and 15 minutes from uh atlanta and so he called me yesterday. He's like, yeah, I got to come down to Georgia for, for a work meeting, but I'm going to come down a day early and I'm going to come see you, check out your apartment, take y'all, take you out to eat, stuff like that. So it was a real nice time yesterday. We took, he took us out to a nice restaurant down here called Ray's, about five minutes from my apartment. Oh, um, Ray's is really good. It, it, it was the bomb. Like, let me tell you something. It was like a steak and seafood place. I had... I yeah. put, if I go to a place like that and they have a steak, that's probably the, the one time I will get a steak. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, like, I'm very particular because I've been to steakhouses and I've had good quality steak. So I'm not going to get like, you no, know, just regular average steak. Like, if I'm going to get steak, then I'm going to go like get it at a place like that. And that was the bomb. The steak was phenomenal. We had dessert. I had like a little butter cake. That was phenomenal. So it was just a great, it was just a great experience just going out, you know, seeing my dad for real. Also, my cousin came along, who was also my roommate. So, you know, we was out, the three of us were out, you know, enjoyed, enjoyed our time together, you know, as a family. So it was just, it was just great, you know, it was just great seeing my dad for real. And I know a lot of people can't really say that because, you know, sometimes, like, I'm, depending on the, the relationship with your parents, it's like, you know, I I know like some people may be like, man, like I wish I had that, you know, love from my father or something like that. But it just made me realize like, man, like my dad came all the way down here. He didn't even have to come. He didn't have to come see me, but he did. So it was just like, a very, it was just a blessing. And it's crazy like how I was with my dad. We get back to the apartment. He's, you know, he, he was kind of just hanging out for a little bit before he went back to the hotel. And I remember like he got a call from my great aunt, his aunt, um, from uh, Macon. And she had expressed like how she had just lost her dad and at the funeral is today. So it, it just really blew him. Cause he was, I could tell like, I don't know if he was getting ready to cry, but he was just like in shock. He was, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he was kind of like just broke his eye a little bit. And he was like, man, like life. He was just saying like how life is just so precious and everything like that. So it was just crazy, like how I was with my dad and I was blessed to see my dad while she had lost the day. So it just yeah. made me realize, like, man, like, you know, this life really ain't nothing to play with for real. Like, you know, every day that that's why every day that I wake up, I'm always thanking God that I'm alive. And I know I say it every yeah. single day. Attitude and, of gratitude. <laughs> and, and I remember like one dude kept asking me that. He he asked me, like, I remember I was talking to this one guy. And he would check in with me every day. Um, and he was like, Chris, we're like, what are you grateful for? And every day I say, I'm just grateful to be alive, grateful to be alive, grateful to be alive. He was like, man, he like, man, is that is that it? I'm like, listen, I said, no, that's not it. But listen, like, I just know, like, being alive is just the biggest gift of all. You know what I'm saying? Right. I realized yeah. like, how important it is, like, just how you know, just the importance of just being able to breathe, being able to live your life for real, you know what I'm saying? And be able to have good health and strength. And because as you can see, like people come and go every day, man, you know what I mean? And a lot of us, we don't realize that, you know, 
despite of everything that goes on in our life, you know, whether like it's the bill, the bills that need to be due, like the fact that maybe we ain't where we want to be in our life. But sometimes we just got to realize like being alive is like the biggest blessing, even though we may not have everything in order as of now. But you got to realize like just being alive, being able to see your people, being able to see your family, being able to hang out with your friends, being able to be in good health. That's stuff that you got to realize like, hey, like even though I may not have some of these material things, at least like. I'm still here. At least I still get to breathe. At yeah. least, like, I get to see my parents. And sometimes we don't realize that because we get so caught up in what we don't have that we forget to realize what we actually do have. So it's just like... That's so, so true, Chris. Yeah. Um, like I tell you from my perspective <laughs> that I... um, It took me when, you know, I'm I'm 42. So it took me a lot of time to understand this but i think i understood that early in life because when i was about let's say i was i think i was a freshman in college i lost my aunt and my aunt was like she kind of like helped raise me like she lived in my house during the week and then we would spend the weekends in her house in in the city so i li we lived in connecticut and then we would go to new york to stay in her house for the weekend but she was like my second mom. And I think that the only reason, you know, she passed away um, from a heart attack. Um, she was sitting in church next to my mom and um, they didn't know how to tell me, but I think one of the things and what I was, I, I, I didn't take it as bad as I thought I would. It was because I remember saying to her like about two days before she passed away, she said to me, I'm gonna go visit you in two weeks. And I said, okay. I love you. The last words I said to her were, I love you, because for some reason, something inside of me said, and I always used to tell her, but um, this time it was like a different feeling. It was like an I love you, but like, I felt like the words through the phone were much more, um, what's the word, uh, much more heavier, like much more meaning. And she passed away two days later. And I remember thinking to myself, and I still think this to this day, saying, I'm so grateful because I had her for all the years that I had. And I was able to count my blessings with her. And she was able to give me so much. And the last words I said to her were, I love you, because you're right. We don't know what, what we have or what's going to happen the next minute. So when we count our blessings in the moment we live in, we are doing a service. And when we're grateful for what we have, we are doing mm -hmm. a service for ourselves mentally. I mean, I just think of attitude of gratitude. You know, when you wake up, I was just saying this to a client of mine yesterday, when you wake up and you have this attitude of gratitude, your whole entire day changes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it changes to the point where you just wake up and everything is different when you start giving an attitude of gratitude. I mean, I I know that instead of waking up and thinking about, oh my gosh, I gotta pay this, or I gotta do this, or I gotta do that. I just say to myself, you know what? Thank you, Lord, for everything that I have, for this apartment that I have, for the car that I have, for the family and my folks that are still alive, that I can talk to them, and that I can hear my father's voice telling me how much he loves me. And that I think is gold. Mm -hmm. yeah super yeah and, and that that's key that's that's really key right there to, is to like you know when you wake up you gotta like say your positive affirmations and you gotta like speak life into yourself i feel like a lot of people don't do that you know what i'm saying they yeah. wake up and they like you know they dread to get up out of bed they be dreading like oh like man, I got it. Oh, it's Monday. Oh, man, I got to get out. Ah, you know, people be complaining so much. It's like, man, I bet you if you go to a grave site, man, I bet you them people that be in them graves that, you know, when you drive past some grave sites, I bet you them people wish they had a day like, you know, you had, you know, to be able to wake up and be able to, like, go out and, and see light for real. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, we... Yeah, they can't even, they can't even wish that. Cause, right, you know, that's what I'm they're... saying. It's like, it's like, true what you said, though, in a metaphorical sense, like those people probably before they passed or didn't even know, you know, depending on the circumstance that they were going to pass. But some of them did know and maybe they wanted that second chance. So we have that. So 
I know what you say when when you just said it hit home and you said people wake up and, and a lot of people don't do that. I think I was one of those people at one point because my depression had hit an all-time high. So I would go to bed anxious, crying, and then wake up in the same position and my days would be the same. And there, it seemed like there was no hope. It just seemed like everything was so dark and gloomy. And I don't think that's a way to live at all. You know, um, I think that when you, and I think it's also a choice. People make that choice. You know, people make the constant choice to live in that and to complain. Like you said, just this weekend, I was telling someone, instead of complaining about the hours that you have to work, why don't you turn around and give a different perspective? Give it light. Shed some light on it. Say to yourself, you know what? I'm grateful. I got a job. Most people don't have it. I'll be out of here in a couple of minutes. I'll be out of here in an hour. And enjoy the time that you have there. Because it wasn't like the job was so bad or that the bosses were so bad. I think it was just the time that the person has to work. So when I gave that light to the person, the person kind of looked at me and just said, you know what, this is kind of true. And I, I actually spoke about this with one of my clients, you know, when we go into something that's not in a, in a kind of ungrateful attitude or an attitude where we're not giving gratefulness, we, and we're complaining, what tends to happen is our attitude becomes very negative. And we become in this like spiral of just ugh, hate and just darkness. And what we want is, you know, a grateful attitude for our days to be full of hope, full of moving forward instead of staying stuck. But a lot of people don't associate that. They don't make the actual choice to do so. Mm -hmm. and, and every day that you wake up, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's always about attitude and the effort that you put forth. That's one thing my football coach said, even though he was crazy. That's one true thing, like, he will always preach to us. It's like, you can control two things. You can control your attitude and you can control your effort. That's probably the truest thing I ever heard that man say. <laughs> that one is true, though. And, that, that's fact. and that's facts because, like, people thinking, like, you know, people can only make them make themselves feel a certain way. Nobody right. else can make you feel sad. Nobody else can make you feel mad. Nobody else can nobody else can make you feel like nervous. That's all mental. Like the way you feel throughout your day, that's all like determined by you and your perspective on on the day. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It's like people sometimes I like sometimes I like people be like already determined in their day based off one like mishap that happened. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, it's like, okay, like, you know, maybe they wake up. And, uh, you know, maybe like they get caught in traffic or something like that. Or maybe they forget, maybe they forget something that at home or something. Or maybe they late to work or whatever. And they're already thinking like, oh, okay, this day is already going to be terrible. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because of like one thing that happened for real is like, they're already thinking like, oh, like my day is, my day is bad. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, why would you already like manifest that? if your day hadn't even really started for real. It's like, you just woke up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you just woke yeah, up. Yeah. It's like, you don't, you, you can't determine like how your, the rest of your day is going to be based on one bad experience. And that's what some people do. It's like, oh, today's not my day because, you know, I forgot this or, you know, I ran into some traffic or, you know, I spilled coffee on myself. It's like, man, come on, man. Just dust that off and keep going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and you want to know what? Now that you say that, a lot of people don't realize that certain things happen in this lifetime that, um, what's the word I want to use? For example, I'm in traffic. People get so upset. I'm in traffic. I'm going to be late to work, but they don't know what they were probably saved from. They don't know that probably the reason why they got stuck in traffic is because God was telling them, look, I want you to avoid an accident that's going to happen. I don't want you a part of that. Or... Or even if you don't believe in God, the universe, some people don't believe in God, the universe, then fine, we'll say the universe. It sometimes is protecting you from certain things. So I always say there's a reason for everything. But like you said, when you wake up and you initially have that type of attitude, you set in the tone for your day. 
you're setting the tone for your day. And like you said, oh man, I was in traffic. I've had people complain, complain, complain. And it just, for me, because I know I used to be that person. Now it, it like, it annoys me sometimes when people are just complain, complain, complain. Now I know that there are certain instances that I can complain because something just happened and I'm like, oh, but then I'm like, you want to know what? Okay. I'll figure it out. You know? And that is a choice. Mm-hmm. That's a choice mm-hmm. that you have yep. every day. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's like you have, and again, I always say this, like you have the ability to basically like control, like how you go throughout your day for real. Um, and, and just like, Knowing like, okay, like if something like that were to happen, like if you were to go into a, if something were to happen, like some tragedy were to happen, it's like, my thing is this, like if one area is not going your way, you got to look at areas at all. You know what I'm saying? It's like, sometimes like I can, I can get mad sometimes. Like I can get frustrated. Like, you know, if, if I expect, like, let's say like, okay, like, I'm at the car, like I'm at the tire. Like I'll, I'll use this one example. I remember one time I was trying to get my uh, tires like looked at because I thought like there was a hole in them at one point. And I remember I was at a tire shop. And I'm thinking like, okay, like they're just going to change my tire. It's going to be about 30 minutes, right? I ended up spending three hours at the tire shop, man. I was frustrated. Cause I'm like, I did not plan to be there for three hours, right? On a Friday. I'm like, man, I'm gonna go in here real quick. They're gonna change my tire. But then they talking like all this other stuff. They're like, yeah, like we had to take it out. You're gonna have to get new rims. I'm like, man, come on, man. That ain't that. And I was getting frustrated for real. I'm like, man. And i and, and again, like sometimes I can like get in that mindset where I'm like, Ugh. yeah. But then I had to realize, I'm like, hold on. I'm like, calm down. <laughs> I'm like, calm down. I said, listen, at least I still got a car. At least, you know, I'm still alive. At least, like, you know what I'm saying? It could be worth, you know what I mean? So I had to, like, just calm myself down. And what I also did was I made I made it a fun experience. I called one of my dudes. I put, I put him on the phone. I was catching up with him. And I was just, like, you know, really enjoying the conversation, you know what I'm saying, to kind of, like, take my mind off of everything that was happening. So again, it's like, okay, like, how do you make, how do you turn a negative to a positive? How do you like, again, like turn that negative thinking into positive? And sometimes you got to find outlets. And that was one of them right there. Instead of like complaining, sitting there, complaining like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be stuck here for two more hours. I'm like, you know what? Let me call my dudes. You know what I'm saying? Let me like, you know, do something that's going to help me to get that positive energy flowing. So some of y'all, that's what y'all got to do, man. Like, you know, what's funny, though, because now that you say that, like, I dare people right now, like when they go through their day to check out the difference between the two. Go ahead. I dare people to just sit and complain one single day, sit and complain and get pissed about everything. And then the next day, be grateful for everything and just let it go. See the difference. And you'll realize, you know, I mean, literally, when you are in a constant negative state, it affects you physically, mentally, I, because some people get anxious. Anxiety causes them not to eat or to overeat, which is not good to grab for whatever there is. So it affects all different areas of your life. People don't believe in that. People, I don't think, realize that. Not that they don't believe in it, they just don't realize that. And so I dare people to check out the difference. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like, you got to think like, there's always somebody that's worse off than you. So even yeah. though you may think like you're going through something, listen, there's always somebody worse off than you, man. You know what I'm saying? There's always going to be somebody doing better and there's always going to be somebody doing worse. So it's like you always trying to like strive to like be in a certain place. It's like, listen, like reality is like there's always going to be somebody taller. There's always going to be somebody stronger. There's going to be somebody weaker. There's going to be somebody shorter. So it's like sometimes, like, for example, like people be complaining about their height. You know, they be like, man, like, I wish I was taller. Or, man, you know, I wish I had this car. I'm like, they be like, man, like, I wish I had a Mercedes Benz. or I wish I had this person's house. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, bro, you complaining about the, all these material things that you don't have. Man, go down there to the, to the you know, go downtown or somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Or go on the outskirts of downtown. See how the people live. It's like, you Yo, know. downtown, there's a lot of homelessness, too, in it, Atlanta. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because such a big city for real. And it's like, yeah. 
You know, there's somebody living worse off than you. There's somebody that has more to complain about than you. So it's like, yeah. okay, even though you may not have no Mercedes Benz, at least you got a car that room. At least you ain't walking like miles and miles to get to your destination. At least you ain't taking a train yeah. or anything like that. At least you got transportation. You know, even though you may not live in no five, six-story house, you know, with the gated fence, but even though, but at least you got somewhere to stay. Because I, I didn't seen a documentary where people were living in tents, man. That's yeah. that is like, bro, like, man, come on. Why are people got why are people living in tents Skid under Row. a bridge, man? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Outside. Skid Row in Cali. Yeah, Skid Row in Cali. You have uh Nevada, I guess it's in Nevada, Las Vegas, where they're underground. Mm -hmm. uh, because they made their underground what like water system, I guess it was. I saw a documentary on that. There's nobody, there's always somebody that has it worse. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I mean when I say count, my, count your blessings. It's like, man, like, you know, you gotta realize, like, at least you ain't like, at least you ain't like this, this, this. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, even though you may not have a car you want, at least you got a car. So again, it's all about shifting your perspective for real. And yeah. you know, at the end of the day, like, life is more than just like having stuff you know what i'm saying like one thing like when i realized when i was with my people yesterday i realized like i'm like man if i could just be with them you know what i'm saying if, like if i could just like hang out with them i'd be the happiest person in the world because at the end of the day life you can have all the money you can have like basically everything all the materialistic things. You could be the richest person in the world. That's why rich people is still unfulfilled. You know what I'm saying? Why is it that some rich folks is still not happy? Because it's more to life than just having stuff. You know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. Now that you say that, um, I was reading this weekend <clears throat> about an actress who passed away. And Hachi, I think her name is. Hachi. She was in Donnie Brasco. She was in like a list actress. She suffered so much throughout her lifetime, but again, shifting in, 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 in she went through a lot of trauma. But instead of seeking help and she uh, and shifting that perspective, I think she lived. From what I can tell, she lived that perspective of just darkness because she was into a lot of drugs. And so the way she ended up passing away was, and she did that day or I, I don't know if it was that day or two days before. I think it was that day from what I heard on the first news. But, you know, sometimes when they first report something, it isn't always uh, to the T. And so they said that she had done a podcast that day with another former actress. Um, but she was apparently um, either she was on drugs. She was in a residential area zooming by about 100 miles per hour. They were trying to get her to stop, but she wouldn't stop. And she did about three or four times. So finally, she crashed into a house um, and the car burnt, burnt up. Wow. And they pulled her out. She was alive. But then she went into a coma from her injuries. And she had a lot of brain injury. And you can see when they pull her out, it took 59 firefighters to get her out. So they pulled her out and they see, you see where she gets up and she does this. And then um, they take her to the hospital and she literally passed away this week. But my point is that her mind never shifted. How far do we go before we know we should shift our minds? You know, how many of us have not shifted yet? How many of us wake up like that every single day mm -hmm. and don't count their blessings? I, I, I wonder, did she count her blessings? Did she know how blessed she was? Or was she, like you said, how many rich people are not counting that, are not seeing what they have in front of them? So you could have all the money in this world, but if your mind isn't right and you're not in a humble state and you are not thinking about gratitude, and, none and of that, that matters. And that tells me right there is that, <clears throat> again, even though she may have had it all, and there, there was like another like incident with another successful person. I think I forget her name, but it was a it was a lady that uh, had apparently jumped from jumped from her apartment building or something. I think I might have mentioned. I forget her name though. I have to go back and listen. Was it in New York? 
I, I don't I, I I don't remember. But anyway, I, 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 I yeah, I, I don't. But like there but there have been several instances where like um famous celebrities or what whatever, famous people who have money and like they've um you know taken their own lives in their own hands and that just shows you like again they're missing something. You know what I'm saying? Even though yeah. they have everything that they you know, everything that they can buy, it's like their mental state mental something is not- something is missing. You know what I'm saying? And they may have it all on, you know, you know, in their house, but it's like maybe like there's an area in their life where it's like, okay, like there's more and that and that just goes to show you like there's more to life than just having things. You know what I'm saying? It's more about yeah. You know the relationships that you have, the peace that you have with yourself, the way you see yourself. That's the most important thing. Is like, how do you see yourself? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of us, we live our lives day to day, trying to impress other people and trying to live up to other people's standards. And that's the and that's and that's the thing. Unfortunately, it's like some people like they only gonna like you for what you do for them. And I feel like that puts a lot of pressure in our mind to like strive to be perfect every single day and we can't like let these people down and that's what really gets in our head you know what i'm saying but at the end of the day you gotta be okay with yourself and if you ain't okay with yourself then it's gonna make it hard for you to like really like have a positive outlook on life if you can't um if you can't be okay with yourself and be grateful for who you already are you know that's why nowadays people are trying to like go out and to see these different people and try to get modifications to themselves and it's like bro like you was already good before like they ain't no yeah. more with you you just yeah. that like, yeah like operations and lips hey chris we only have about seven minutes I, I see we that. already went through 40 minutes uh yes yeah, it's, it's 30 yeah i see yeah it's about 32 minutes because i i keep, keep a tab yeah but okay but, but but exactly, there's a lot of modifications going on. People are not happy with themselves really quickly um, before we end. And it's crazy because I used to see it all the time in the passport services. People would come in and go to the Dominican Republic, Colombia to get their to get their whatever it is done, body, body transformation, lip size, whatever it was. And unfortunately for me, I mean, I get it. If you don't feel comfortable and you want to make yourself, you know, or you need something done because it's for health wise, I get it. But at the same time, you wonder and you say to yourself, okay, you know, are they really happy with who they are? Mm -hmm. You know, because everybody's unique and was made uniquely. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So again, I know we got about six minutes, but if you didn't take none away from this, just remember, like, every day as you wake up, man, just be grateful that, you know, you're still alive. Be grateful that, you know, if you still got your parents, like, if you still got support around you, you know, if you're still able to live a, a good quality of life, man, and you're still able to breathe, like, again, like, that should be enough. That should be a motivation to, keep, to continue to keep living, man. You know what I'm saying? And knowing that life is precious. And so if you use that as your motivation and realize like hey like you know you only got so much time that should be your motivation to go out and max out your days and that's my that's enough for me to be like you know i'm gonna get out of bed i'm gonna go work out you know i'm gonna go live my life for real because again you only get so much time like and you don't know when your time's up so you better start playing with your life that's all i'd be saying like with people that just be wasting their time like man like why are you playing with your life man just go out here and do it like people be like man i don't know man i don't know if it's the right time Man, there's no right time, man. There's yeah, no they're never right time, man. Stop trying to like time it up. Like just go do it, man. Cause again, you don't know when your time gonna be up. So it's like if you got something you want to do, go do it, man. That should be your motivation. Is that you only get so much time, but the time that you got, go out and live your life and don't get so caught up in trying to like be perfect or try to live up to anybody else's standards. Just do you at the end of the day. And know that you have been called for a greater purpose in life. And so just don't, again, see that for what it is and go for it. So Exactly. And if you have trouble doing that, seek the help. Exactly. Find a way to get there. Exactly. Yeah. Reach out. Reach out to any of us, man. Like, reach out to yeah. you know, me. You can reach out to Sandra. You can reach out to anybody that you're supposed to, man. But you got to speak up. You got to let people know. Like, hey, like, I need support. I need this. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, right. 
Yeah, getting that happy. But anyway, um, that's really all the time we got. Um, just remind y'all go check me and Sandra out on Instagram, my Instagram at disinfecting your life, no space, no capitals. And then go check out Sandra's Instagram. Uh, what is it at complete? What is it? Confidence coaching. Complete confidence coaching. Um, I got all that in in on my Instagram. So if you go to my feed and you see the uh, videos of me and her that I post every Mondays, you'll be able to find her. I tag her in like all my posts. So definitely go check us out, man. Don't forget, click check the check out the link tree in the bio. Um, you know, I got all kind of stuff in there. You know, I got my uh, Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcast channel. Also got my merch. Also got my book. Also got my connect call. You know what I'm saying? If you want to grab time on my calendar, I got y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? But there's so many ways you can connect with people, man. So just take advantage of that and, uh, you know, be able to put yourself out here for real. Because you ain't going to expand your connections unless you go out here and assert yourself, which is what we were talking about two weeks ago when I posted the episode about spending your connections. But we're going to have to pick up on that. I just realized that we did a part one, so we're going to have to do a part two. So we're gonna pick up on that on that uh, episode, expanding your connections, yes. so we can continue to keep uh, having y'all, you know, expand your connections for real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As simple as that. Exactly. But, but anyway, man, y'all already know what it is, man. This your boy, Chris Simmons, alongside my partner in crime, Miss Sandra Cruz. We out, y'all. Take care, y'all. Peace. Bye.